St. Croix, First Street Commercial to St. Croix, Second Street Buckeye to North, Third Street Locust to Division Street, Fourth Street Walnut to River Street, Fifth Street Walnut to River Street, Sixth Street Locust to River Street, and portions of Curb and Gutter on 17th Street South at, at the cul-de-sac, Eighth Street Vine to St. Croix Street, Sixth and St. Croix Street. Is there anyone here that would like to uh, speak to the council about these subjects? Yes, sir. Uh, I you want to take, you want to come up and identify yourself? You're on TV. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is your debut. My name is Dwayne Brown, and I live in 726 8th Street. Okay. And uh, there's a portion of the of the uh, sidewalk, or it's a, actually it's not the sidewalk, it's an extension from the sidewalk to the curb of the, like a T, am I, I get, you don't look. You're doing all right. You yeah. don't sound like, you, you don't look like you understand <laughs> what I meant. I always look like that. <laughs> all right. Anyway, it's, it is crack, and it's, and I see that they've got markers on there, but I don't want that replaced. I just want to. I was going to remove it. I just moved there a few months ago, and I'm in the process of doing some uh, improvements. Okay. And part of those part of those improvements was to remove that uh, slab, those two small slabs of uh, because there's two tr trees okay. that there are there, and as long as those trees are there, that. Uh, always any concrete is going. Uh, any walk is going to uh, crack, and it's not going to stay. Okay. So, uh, there's no really no point in doing that, and I'd like to have that uh, removed from the project. Well, we'll have somebody from Public Works take a look at that. Okay. Okay. And then, of course, the uh, the cost would, should be. Uh, removed from my uh, my assessment. Well, you, you want the cement taken out of there, right? I'll take it out. Oh, you're going to take it out. Okay. All right. Is Tom, Is Tom here? Yeah. Have you Matthew, that's the whole purpose of the hearing is we can explain things like that. And, and a lot of times those carriage sidewalks, as we call them, um, if you wish not to have them, that's, that's your prerogative, and that's not a problem. Okay. We will take one section of sidewalk out, that's what I mark, because we're putting in curb and gutter. We just need a little room to put our uh, forms in. So if you wish not to um, have that replaced, that's that's your option, and that's great. We'll just deduct it off the assessment. We'll take that from the total, yeah. as okay. you were asking. All right. Okay. So now we're both smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Thank well, you. I'm not really, I'm not real happy. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me like, like the, the the storm gutters and stuff that they're working on and replacing is a benefit to everyone on the street. True. And and I've noticed. I looked over. Uh, it was where you were doing some work. Okay. And I don't understand why that's not advertised over the uh, the whole neighborhood, so to speak, and uh, even the town. I mean where I've lived before, that's what they did when they did a project. And then they do one section one year, another section another year, as you're doing it. You can't do it all in one year. And it, it just seems to me that it benefits everyone in the city. Well, that's true. Not, but it, not it, just, not ju it just happens that you're doing it in front of some of it in front of my property which which benefits you more than the rest of the people I don't see it that way but oh, okay. uh, it it benefits everyone sir what? The, everybody else in the city pays half of the cost you're only paying half of the cost of curb and gutter so you're saying that if you should look for houses and you can have said you should buy houses that don't have storm drainage not saying that at all saying is that if you buy a house on a corner with a storm drain you're going to be you're going to pay more when it's a public works project than if you move to a house in the street. That's right. Like my I mean, neighbors really aren't paying anything. Point is, 
Well, that's true everywhere, in, uh, no matter what city you're in. No, no, we're saying that's not necessarily true because I've lived other places. He's lived other places. What? I'm choosing Fallon and I live at 706 Orange Street around the corner. And we purchased that home together. And I'm just saying, and I, I haven't lived on a corner. And I guess I got lucky that the work I've done before I moved there um, because. So maybe that's, right. maybe that's the part you should check. Well, I don't know. I mean, so But I, I think that's common nature over uh, over the common knowledge over the years that every time you're on the corner, it's going to involve uh, uh, two uh, sections. Betty. I think I think you have to be aware that you're not paying for storm sewer. Are you paying for curb and gun replacement or sidewalk and sidewalk replacement? Which is right. I'm not paying for storm sewer. I'm paying for the curb and gun replacement. Yeah. Everybody has a linear foot. Figure out how many feet are being replaced because your home can't be more than what's in front of your home. You're not paying for anybody. Our finance director is going to tell you right now. Okay. The assessment is based on the cost per linear foot. So for the curb and gutter replacement, it's a cost per linear foot. So the frontage that's measured in front of your house or the replacement portion that's going to be in front of your house is what you're paying for. Um, you're not paying for any of the storm portion of it. The city's paying for that. Um, the mill and overlay that will happen on the street, the city's paying for that. You're only paying for your curb and gutter and 50% of that. Now if you have a side yard, if you're unfortunate and you have one of those nice corner lots so that you don't have to pay um, more than anybody else basically in the neighborhood because you have that, you get 25%, you only have to pay 25% on a side lot, 50% of your frontage. So therefore it's given a break to people that have side lots. That's been the city policy. Did that answer your question? I mean, I don't even know what a side lot is. I'm a 50% person when I look and there are other people. Are you on the corner? Yeah. Okay. You didn't understand what you were I, saying? I didn't quite understand what that meant. Okay, if you're on a corner, the frontage of your home mm -hmm. will be charged at 50%. Right. If they were doing the work on the side of your property, you'd only be charged 25%. Okay. So if your average is on the eighth side, side, what is it? If your average well, house faces 8th Street and you have an 8th Street address, that would be assessed at 50%. Right. Let's say it's on Elm. Elm. As a side street, that would only be 25 What located my house? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on if they were doing both sides. You can do that, we'll have another one. <laughs> Understood? I understand. It's, 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 uh, I suppose it's a convention. I'm used to conventions. So. Well, and it, it's a terrific advantage it, rather than being 50 50 on, on both of those areas. So okay. what happens though if it's what happens though if it's uh, Elm Street isn't on that this time around, but next time it's around, and so then now is now is that considered always will that always be considered the side? It should be considered the side. Sorry. That's right. It's it's it, it, it depends. Your front door is facing. And if we, I mean, if it does come down the road where the other street does get done, I mean that's something that if we miss, someone would have to obviously front on. Unless you house. turn your house. Into right. <laughs> yeah. Unless you have a revolving so home. Anyone else? Anyone? Move to close the hearing. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. I'll take a look at 726 uh, A Street right after the meeting. <laughs> but I'll be there tonight. <laughs> Uh, next hearing is um, 
purpose of the hearing is to hear public comment regarding a request by River City Partners in the City of Hudson for rezoning from I-1 Light Industrial District and B-3 Central Business District to B-3 Central Business District. And we, uh, we know where that property is, all right? Is there anyone that is in the audience that would like to speak to this subject? Anyone? Got to ask one more time. Anyone? Any? I want to make a point of clarification. Apparently there's some rumors out there there's going to be a presentation by GCI tonight. That is not the issue. The issue is the zoning of the property. Uh, the west half of the, the River City Center site is zoned light industrial and also the city property west of that is zoned industrial. Uh, the request for rezoning is a change of zoning in those two areas from light industrial to central business district which our comprehensive plan has supported since 1993. We're not presenting a GCI proposal tonight. Why don't you tell the audience why it was that way? Well the reason it was that way is because uh, when the building well uh, the old part of downtown with the railroad uh, river and so forth most of the riverside of 2nd Street was zoned light industrial. Uh, when the, uh, that building was built, the bottom portion on the back side or the first street side was warehouse. So the parcel was zoned half central business district, half industrial district. Uh, the cities wanted to go to a central business district for several years. We've allowed it to stay light industrial so that the, that warehouse portion would be a conforming use and, and not a non-conforming use. So accommodate the loading docks and that sort of thing. That's right? correct. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Move to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. We're right on, aren't we? Let's, um, Open a regular meeting of the Common Council for Monday, June 18th. We'll call that meeting to order, and would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Clerk, take the roll, please. Mayor Brill? Here. District 1 more set? Here. O'Connell is absent. Three Rademacher. Here. Four Wyland. Here. Five O'Malley. Here. Six Birchall. Here. At this point in our agenda, we take comments and suggestions from citizens present on any subject not on the agenda. Is there anyone that'd like to address the council? Anyone? Can I ask one more time? If not, we'll go to the consent agendas, and Madam Clerk will verbalize those for us. To approve the regular meeting minutes of June 4th, 2007, the closed session minutes will be on the next council meeting. To approve the continuation of the conditional use permit for the outdoor display area on the north and west sides of Valley Pools and Spas of Hudson, 1500 Crestview Drive, with only one display of pools and spas permitted, a five foot high fence that can be secured in closing the display area and review of the permit in three years. To approve the claims for payment in the amount of $697,231.33. A detailed report is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the issuance of one regular operator's license for the period June 19, 2007 through June 30, 2008. And the issuance of three regular operator's licenses through June 30, 2009 and the issuance of four temporary operator's licenses to be used June 28th to July 1st, 2007 during Hudson Booster Days. Specific operator license information is available in the clerk's office on request. To approve the request of Cornerstone Church for a handicapped parking space to be installed in front of their church at 1024 4th Street. To approve the Marine Max Aqua Palooza event on Saturday, July 28th, 2007 from noon till 5 p.m in Lakefront Park using the Banshell, a 60-foot raft, moored on the south side of Dyke Road, and food and games tent at the end of the dike. To deny the stenciled painting of parking permit stalls in the Williams parking lot behind the Public Safety Building. 
to approve the $7,930 quote from Environmental Landscape Management Incorporated, 75 Schomer Drive, Hudson, Wisconsin, for the Burkmost Park Trail Improvements Project. To approve the $3,982 quote from B&B Electric, 1303 Western Avenue, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. Can you remove that one, please? Mm -hmm. To approve the $11,500 bid from Bailey Construction, Stillwater, Minnesota, to construct a concrete boat, boat ramp at Corky's Pier and boat launch at Lake Malalu. To place and file the Public Utility Commission minutes of June 12, 2007, and the Joint Library Board minutes of May 14, 2007, and the Plan Commission and Council Joint Meeting minutes of May 31, 2007. That is all. The, the, the which one? Move for approval. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Morissette? Yes. O'Malley? Yes. Wyland? Yes. Birchill? Yes. Rademacher? Yes. Motion is carried. You want to take yours up first? Lee? Yeah. Okay. One of the things that, you know, as we're looking at the new sight lines in the city, this particular electrical box that we're talking about adding additional you know, work to. Did you um, see the picture of that? Yeah, I know. And if you come down the street and look, at, it's beautifully flame, or framed right in the archway. I would like to see the park board consider removing or relocating that so when we talk about the sight lines, when we talk about the, you know, the stuff we're working with Mark Putnam, that rather than investing more money in here, we look at how to improve that whole area. We have to weigh the cost of doing that against camouflage. You know. Right. Uh, true. Send that back to the park board. Your why, thoughts? Why can't you just go ahead with the box and then uh, put some bushes and trees around it and be done with it? We're going to have to have a box regardless to, to in that uh, general area to cover mm -hmm. the, the stuff. So I would suggest we move ahead with the box and we'll look at camouflage that some more or moving it. And is most of this most of this money is the box itself, not the installation, right? Or is it the other way around? I think I don't believe it's been broken out. It's probably mostly the box. It's a stainless steel box. Okay. I like the park board too. I, I've mentioned it to a couple of people, but I hadn't mentioned it here. That if you come down that street, it's beautifully framed, well, right in the middle of the archway. We'll have to make a motion to that effect, and we'll okay. spin it around the council here. Well, I'll move to approve it then. Okay, you beat him to the punch, I guess. Is there a second to that? I'll second the motion. Discussion. What are we moving to approve? Which of these two discussions? I just want to go ahead with the bid in the box. He's saying and then the park board can cover it up. Mm -hmm. Send it back to uh, park board for review. Well, it is a very ugly structure there, and we ought to rethink it a little bit before we add more to it. Well, we need to cover that stuff anyway, so we need a box to do that. And is this? this all the, all the utilities there. So whether we move them or not, we're still going to need the box to go over all that. So, so this stainless steel box covers the entire four by eight foot sheet of plywood. Is that the plan? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure they could condense it to fit into what it's, what's or is it spec out for that size? It's going to fit the whole the whole situation that we got. There'll there be right a now. cover for that. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. How would how would workers gain access to work on one of the it's on hinges? That okay, so that precludes planting something in front of it because you got to have room for the hinge door to open up. It, it's the same it, type of box we use for uh, I think the water department has got one or two of them on own. It just seems to me like the answer should be to move it someplace else or to even if you need that cover on it. Here we're investing a lot more money in something that's really doesn't enhance our park. At your all. your additional cost, Dennis, do you have do you know what we're talking? How expensive is I mean you got how many uh, electrical lines moving in there? Plus the new uh, wires down to the water pump. No. No. This is the electric irrigation, the monitoring right. system. Yeah. yeah. My question is, is how more, much more expensive is to move all that electrical? I mean, you're talking a couple thousand more dollars. 
I, I would. Oh, are you moving? Well, okay. well, regardless, we still, need, we still need a, a box to go over everything. Whether we leave well, it there or move it, we still need that to, at least in the short term, it'll look a lot better than what you have there now. Plus, nobody can get at it. Nobody will get at it. Yeah, I understand that. So I, I agree with you, we should probably look at planting or moving it, but we still need to purchase the box to... And, yeah, and unless you're saying why you spend stuff. that money if you're going to move it. Yeah, if you're going to move it or change it or lower it or, or do something with it to make it not what it is i mean it was it was i was driving down the street one day and i called up scott and i said have you i didn't realize it was brand new until i realized that our sight well, line you can, you can was do completely changed you can pick up this motion or we can say let's uh take it off the agenda and look at the uh, cost of yeah. doing it one way I'd or like, the other i'd like to see it go back to part well of course, not I already missed they, the motion. Not if they remove their motion. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to see it go back to Park Board to rethink what they want to do with that instead of just. How do you guys feel about? I think the Park Board has done their due diligence. I'm ready to, you know, they can dress that up any way they want to cover it. Okay, well, let's take up the motion. I, uh, we're still in discussion. Good question uh, for Dennis Postler. Dennis, um, if the lines are all line parallel to each other it doesn't really make any difference where we cut and where we re-splice we can do it anywhere along that path of of the lines but are the lines coming in from different directions that is are some coming down walnut are some coming along uh second street uh, in other words are they at perpendicular angles or are they all lying in similar aligned conduits somewhere i like what all no, the electrical lines. Um, I'm not exactly sure where they are. I believe they were on the long side. So we could move them. We could move the utility box somewhere else. I believe so, but I'd have to check. Well, thank you. You also got the water lines there, too. So mm -hmm. it's all got to be displaced and moved. So one way we can settle this. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Three to two. But we should look at it in uh, in the light that uh, uh, I agree with you, Lee. Yeah, we, yeah, and we'll still do that. It'll okay, be better than what it was, and we yeah. still try and make it. Plus, better. it'll it'll protect those electrical. I do understand that. Thing. I know yeah. that. Yeah. I need exactly. to protect. Yeah. Uh, and yours was what? The Aquapalooza. Um, as as a point of clarification, Nancy said it was a raft that's being a 60 foot raft. It's actually a 60 foot boat that's being moored out there that people will raft up to. Oh, so I want to make that. Point of clarification. Yeah, I couldn't understand what that raft was all yeah. about when I read that. And move for approval. For a second. I'll second. Discussion. I have a question regarding uh, the scope of the event. The Aquapalooza is put together by people at Marine Max, as I understand it. It's a company picnic for their employees and their customers. But they also say, as well as the public, there's food. And things to drink that are non-alcoholic. Are they proposing to sell these to the public, or oh. give them, or give them away? It's basically, hot dogs on the grill, hot kind dogs, of thing. Correct. <coughs> okay. Uh, no, they're not giving away any alcoholic beverages. It'd be water pop, yeah. uh, energy drinks, maybe. I don't know, but hot dogs primarily. Yeah. They understand they can't serve alcoholic beverages even to their own employees or to yeah. anyone. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we made that. I don't better. think that's our intent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go back to the first page. Uh, plan Commission. Final development plans for Kinder Care Learning Center, 2600 Center Drive, uh, Kern and Bast. <coughs> Denny first. Plan Commission recommends approval of final development plans for the Kinder Care Learning Center, 2600 Center Drive, contingent on plan amendment per city engineer recommendations. <laughs> and those uh, changes have been submitted. We just don't have a sign off yet by the city engineer. Uh, sign off by uh, Banterra that has been received. Uh, also, there was a sign off by Hudson Chrysler on the adjacent grading. Uh, recommend approval. Uh, Mr. Make your Ryan. Motion. Yeah, make your motion contingent upon on those three things. Need one. So moved. Okay. Second. Uh, my concern was about the, uh, the colors, the new colors that they're coming in. With the, uh, no, I, I received uh, phone calls and emails from Banterra last <coughs> week that they were acceptable. 
Good. This is what they're going with? Yes. Final design? Yes, sir. Okay. I wanted them compatible with the rest of the building. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Motion's carried. Conditional use permit for beauty shop, hair salon at 1294 Hosford Street. Mr. <coughs> I'll recluse myself from this. Yep. In I-1 Light Industrial District, Foot Wedge Partners, LLP, Kevin Vance. Planning Commission recommends approval of the conditional use permit to Footwood Partners LLC for a beauty shop hair salon at 1294 Hosford Street with the following conditions uh, it'd be limited the beauty shop uh, hair salon would be limited to four workstations and a review of the conditional use permit one year after issuance of certificate of occupancy. Second. Discussion. You do mean to uh, to move with the conditions that have been put on it? Yeah. Right. Uh, understood. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to four. Certificate of compliance for office, showroom, retail, and warehouse facility for flooring sales facility at 1719 Cooley Road, Erskine Floors, Todd Erskine. Committee recommends the approval of the certificate of compliance for an office, retail, showroom, and warehouse flooring installation business at 1719 Cooley Road. The reason the certificate of compliance is required is because of the retail sector. This property is zoned I-1 light industrial. Um, uh, Mr. Erskine is here tonight if you have any particular questions of Todd. I have one question for Todd. Hi, Todd. Hi. Um, we've seen you before. We, yes. we talked about a location of a, a similar facility uh, down near the river on it was either First or Second Street. Uh, at that time, you were going to be storing uh, different uh, solvents, thinners that were flammable, uh, combustible uh, fluids, and you would need a special permit for that. Do you plan to do that at this location as well? To a more limited space, yes. The the idea here is that the uh, the urethanes and anything that we would be storing there would be in one gallon containers um, and that we would uh, use we would store what we're using uh, for any given week at a time which is a which is a I, I guess relatively speaking a small number um, we might use uh, five to ten gallons a day and we take delivery each week to replenish the stock try to make it a, um, a zero uh, warehouse on on those items okay thank you Mm -hmm. May I ask, are you going to turn the building this brown tan color? That or? as soon as I can do it, yes. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're I think it'll be an up upgrade uh, to that uh, particular building. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll move for approval okay. uh, with the uh, two contingencies uh, display. Right. Excuse me. Um, I'm on the wrong one. Never mind. Four. I'll move for approval. Okay. I'll suck. <laughs> I'm starting to read somebody else's contingency. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Council. Motion's carried. Good luck, Todd. Thanks. Uh, let's go to Finance Committee applications for renewal of liquor licenses for the period of 7107 to 63008 for the Nova, the Buffalo Wild Wings, and Sharon Horn Elstrom LLC. Everything's in order, Chief? Yes, sir. Council? Uh, yes. Move to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion. Um, Wait, all so the we uh, should actually take them one by one. I think. Mm -hmm. right. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Council recommends we take them <laughs> one by one. <laughs> First of all, the Nova. <clears throat> Move to approve. Second. A second. Discussion. Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Buffalo Wild Wings. Move to approve. There a second? Second. Second. Discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Sharon Horn Elstrom, LLC. Move to approve. Second. I'll second. But uh for discussion. What's what's going on down there? The doors are closed. Well the issue that the reason it originally didn't 
get renewed along with the other batch of renewals is that there was a problem with the seller's permit that has been corrected the seller's permit is now in the name of the Sharon Horn Elstrom LLC which is as it should be and so that's what the Department of Revenue had pointed out to the city I was notified that it has been closed I don't know for what period of time I can tell you exactly anything you can enlighten us on chief I have not reported. okay the the issue is under the new ordinance um, there, there's a requirement that a licensed premises be in business or I should say it's it can lose its license if it is not open and using the license for a period of 90 consecutive days well I don't think it's been that long <clears throat> Do you, do you think we should hold this off until we see what's well I don't I mean the ordinance is clear 90 consecutive days and I don't think it's been that period of time if it ends up being that way give uh, then they lose their license but at this point my understanding it's two weeks or something along those lines well, that has been closed. is there information that we could yes. make a better decision on well yes I think so it has been closed uh, for exactly two weeks as of yesterday and uh, there is no prospect of its reopening in fact uh, the phone has been taken out and it is a defunct business at this point <coughs> I've well, called the, the members of the Stucci family and uh, best information I have is that it's dead well it hasn't met the requirements of the ordinance which sure. require 90 days so I don't think you'd have a basis for not renewing it remember the licenses to Sharon Horn Elstrom LLC mm -hmm. and they have met all the requirements as far as everything's paid and yeah. yes <clears throat> to my knowledge the last issue was that seller's permit and that's been corrected so we really have to renew it I think so yes um, I mean certainly watch it um, as any other licensees you're, that rec stays you're recommending we proceed yes Should we put a date on there that we know that this is not done well you, what you can do is calendar it and you know watch it and see what happens within 90 you got, days you got two and a half months can we do that uh, between the chief and Devin yeah. I don't know if we had a form to say we know this is just so we meet that no particular. I think we just need to make a factual basis if it's either been open or not open for that period okay I, I thought when we approved this it was a different name when we approved it at council no it was originally submitted as an individual and then when they submitted their information they were submitting it as a LLC so that's why we could right. not grant that original application they had to submit another <coughs> application under the name of the LLC okay I just thought it was Sharon Horn Elstrom and Stucci's it was like a partnership nope the license has been in Sharon Horn Elstrom LLC okay. after all of that understanding all in favor aye, aye. opposed aye motion's carried let's go to uh, five application of MOBU LLC for liquor class A liquor and class A beer license DBA Hudson Liquor at 1810 Webster Street. Move to approve. A second. I'll second. I'll, recu I'll recuse myself from this. Okay. So this is just a transfer, a name transfer. Is that correct? Same location. Yeah. Different license. Uh, transfer of the license. Is that correct, Shane? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion's carried. Uh, review bid submitted and consider purchase of 12 foot plow and wing equipment for Public Works Department. Uh, that should actually be re rewarded to review bid submitted. Uh, we have <laughs> one a viable bid. Uh, Dan Ortner is here from the Public Works Department. Dan, would you mind coming up to the podium and uh, discussing the uh, case loader? We are uh, looking at purchasing another uh, plow and wing setup for our old 1992 case <coughs> loader to match our new loader that we bought. So our equipment is all interchangeable between the two loaders. Recommendation Public Works is, go ahead. Yes, it's $30,771. Need a motion. I will so move. Second. And that Any was within budget, correct? Yep. Yes, Everything's it is. in. If you'll oh. recall last time I showed how 
we had changed certain things, deleted some and added others, but it came up to the same amount of money, so it is within the budget. We're basically upgrading the older machine so it has all the capabilities of our newer machine. Newer there will be twins, essentially, from now on. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thanks, Dan. Okay. Let's go to number seven, consider budget amendment for repairs to the Bass House roof in Lakefront Park. Recommendation from finance is to approve. Excuse so me. Second. I have a question. Yeah. That um, it's a very walkable roof. Um, how do they come up with twelve thousand five hundred dollars? Seems a bit exorbitant for that particular roof. Well, they, they first of all it was leaking. Yeah. The roof was leaking. They put in a new roof, and this was an estimate. It will probably come in under that particular uh, figure. Mm -hmm. because uh, JJ was there watching to make sure that they uh, didn't remove some of the plywood that was usable. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, they were on site, they were ready to do the work, and we figured uh, for an expedience what situation kind? we should move ahead. Is it asphalt roofing or tile? It's asphalt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll last longer, won't it? Oh, yeah. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. By the way, that bathhouse is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. What an addition to the park area. It, it, it really has a lot of aesthetic uh, appeal. Um, number eight, you, you wanted that removed, correct? Let's go to the second page. Uh, Consider possible funding sources for Nye and Aldridge, triple left-hand turn on Crestview Drive, turn lane on 11th Street, and we're still working on that with... Uh, I think um, we need the funding to move forward, and I think before we can fund it, we have to have a plan and we can let that be scheduled. So you want us to approve the plan, and you will give us the finance dollars. Oh, you're so creative. <laughs> Need a motion. Move to approve. Second. Or second. Discussion. Dennis? Uh, just briefly, there's three projects listed here, and the, um, the Nine Alder Storm Sewer Project, we are not, we're asking to come back for a public hearing, um, I believe, and uh, for the assessments on that, proposed assessments on that project uh, related to curb and gutter replacement. Um, the other two projects, both the um, triple left turn lane at Carmichael and Crestview and the um, right turn lane addition at 11th and Cooley, we do have plans and specifications ready to go, and that's the two that we were asking to, uh, for council to approve and authorize us to uh, Well, if I were looking at priorities, it definitely would be Crestview and Carmichael as number one. Uh, number two would be the 11th Street uh, turn, and thirdly, uh, Nye and Aldridge. But hopefully uh, we can find the funds uh, for all three of these projects because I think they've been going along for about uh, two to three years and uh, they're really needed. So I need a motion to approve these projects. Oh, we got it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Number 10, application of West End Incorporated DBA. Do you want to do the funding tonight? Or? No, she's going to find the funding. No, I've got the funding found. Oh, oh, boy, you're fast. <laughs> Magic. Actually, what I'd like to do is get the approval probably for the Crestview and the 11th and Cooley as long as we're going to proceed, and we can discuss the financing for the other one at the public hearing, or we can discuss it tonight. I included it because I think council needs to know where the funds are kind of floating around and going to, and as it gets tighter and tighter, the funds are not available to do these, so you might want to prioritize these. Maybe you don't want to proceed with doing additional work on Nye and Aldridge, just seeing that the additional costs are there. And so this is a lot for your information and then a lot to say to proceed with what Dennis is proposing. We have to have additional funding. We don't have those projects covered. So in order for that to happen, we need to have this funding approved, especially for the, the Crestview and the Cooley Road. So um, and the project cost for Crestview, we came in at 283000 is what the estimate is. This time we had bond proceeds of 270000 so we're $13,000 short. Um, 
There is a fund that called the Public Works um, Construction Fund, and in that we have accumulated interest earnings and additional mm -hmm. funds that weren't used in the past. And um, with meeting with the mayor and Scott, we came up with the possible um, funding for the additional uh, 13000 to come from those funds. So um, then I'll go through the 11th Street and Cooley, um, same type of deal. We had $81,000 is the expected total cost. We have $56,000 budgeted. So we're short $25,800. Um, I'm also proposing that we take that additional $25,900 from the Public Works Fund and um, fund both of these projects at this time. Betty, how much money do we have in the Public Works Fund? Approximately, this is coming from, we call this the Vehicle Replacement Fund. We had these funds accumulated. We had about $65,000 there. What we did there, Al, is for years we were putting some money away, but since we had the restrictions from Madison, we put all of our vehicles in the two capital projects, which was not part of our actual budget. Consequently, uh, those monies for vehicles were still there, uh, but we can switch those to much needed uh, projects like this one. But I wouldn't like this to in any way dilute the sense of, of, uh, of uh, gratitude that the rest of the council should feel to the Public Works Committee. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see us approve all three of these projects tonight. I understand that maybe we have to hold out the special assessment fund until that's been in the public hearing, but I want to see that project move forward as well because that's as important, if not more yeah. important than these yeah. other. I mean, I, I, you can't really put a priority on any of these three because they're all extremely important. So, I'd you want like to make to a motion? Explain that then, if I could, because I think we need to realize that you're utilizing all of the sewer manhole replacement funds. So we had set aside that to do a project, and um, all of those funds will be utilized in the Nye Aldridge project. We had some additional mill and overlay monies that um, will be utilized to help with the mill and overlay on that project. We still maintain about $10,000 left over from the mill and overlay, but we do see that we might have additional costs with the third street, or sometimes when they get into it a little bit more that we find that we have to do additional work. So we're, we're using that as a contingency at this point. And then the other major portion, the special assessment portion of that project will need to be sp um, funded by the special assessment fund and then we would replenish that as those monies come in. But if we got into an emergency, we have about uh, 35,000 in contingency? Correct. And uh, for 2008, any similar projects we can put under capital projects for that particular year, correct? Uh, yes. Okay, see, I listen well. Okay. So what I'd like to move that we proceed with all three projects. For a second. As proposed for the funding sources. Contingent upon that. Is there a second? I'll second that if, if we do have yeah. a contingent upon the public hearing. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. absolutely. I elaborate on that. That's correct. Any further discussion or questions from Betty? To Betty, excuse me. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Number 10, application of West End. Are we going to do that in closed session? Uh, Let's go to five, review cost estimates and consider installing the handrail at Bath Hall's parking lot. Did I miss one? Well, we, we need to direct Catherine number two. Let's, I'll go back to it. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, there's a, uh, the Public Safety Committee has recommended that we install a handrail at the Bath Hall's parking lot. There's a ramp, a walking ramp that goes uh, from the lot up towards the Phipps. And there's been a lot of requests to have a, a handrail there so people can use that to walk up the ramp, especially in the wintertime. It gets very icy. Yeah, very icy there, and, kind of an incline. And uh, we uh, recommend that we uh, proceed with that. I'll make a motion that we uh, uh, proceed with the installing of a handrail at that parking lot with the money to come out of contingency. Second. Discussion. Kevin, you had a communicate to everyone I did not I, there was a final draft that we have to look at but yes okay I want to re-emphasize that when you're in committees uh, you really make recommendations to the council for the for the finding finding of the funds and approving of the funds right. rather than saying okay we're going to okay this in uh, in, in our committee meeting and we've also hypothetically told the uh, council to do an ordinance. Well, before you do that, that's got to come back to the council, just so everybody understands. Otherwise, our budget is array, and there's it's too much uh, flexible uh, 
emphasis on uh, doing uh, uh, what you want without coming back to the council. Any comments on that? I think you're still looking for a second. Is that right? No, no, no we got we the got second. Okay. I'm in discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Mutual aid service agreement, number one under public works. Um, Jim Schreiber's not here. I guess I'll take this. This is modeled on the uh, same mutual aid agreement that the fire departments in the surrounding area have with the Hudson Fire Department, and that is that we will render assistance in both personnel and equipment should it be needed and will cover anything in public works or wastewater <clears throat> or storm water uh, that needs to be fixed on an emergency That's basis good. should we have, a, for instance, a flash flood, as an example. Um, each municipality will, will be responsible for its own personnel and its own equipment no matter where the emergency is located. And this has already been signed off by most of the uh, municipalities that are listed in the agreement. It's been approved by our water department, it's been approved by our wastewater uh, department, and approved by our public works department. And so I move that we uh, authorize the mayor to sign this mutual aid agreement. There a second? Second. Mutual aid in this time is good because we never know when the next disaster is going to happen and we each should help each other. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Update on projects. Dennis, do you have anything other than what you said previously? Uh, just a couple quick things. On, back on the uh, Carmichael Road project and the Cooley Road, the intent is to come back to the second meeting in July with bids um, to, for the council to review. And the only other thing to add, the report has everything underlined that's new since the last report, but under the um, Rivercrest Elementary School, I believe they're having a pre-construction meeting tomorrow okay. to start that process. Keep us updated. Update on health insurance options. Uh, we had a communique from Devin on that. No, you know, just updating you as we exchange through. I did get another call today from the Representative Rhodes office, and they're still trying to coordinate a meeting with do you have a, a timetable all lined up? That one is I, well, we'll have to, depending on what the, if the agents, as they're reviewing the books and stuff, um, obviously any changes will have to be done before October 1st. And I've also started to put together with, as far as the negotiations, going into what different options will be as far as proposals to the unions, as far as percentages or flat amounts or whatever, and I'm starting to work on that and get cost. In fact, I did some of it today, get cost ideas of what the savings would be at the various options. Does Sheila and Kitty need a letter from the council? Nope. Emphasizing what happened that? was um, the individual that they had contacted at the state, they weren't aware wasn't at the state anymore. So they were kind of chasing a ghost, and they found that out now, so they are now hooked up with the right person. So. Okay. Any other questions? Member uh, Mr. Mayor, the, I believe there is somebody here to speak to the engine braking question. I think your point earlier was whether we should, this is number two under public safety, whether or not the council should spending the funds, right? But I, I think there's somebody here to speak also. Oh, okay. Come up, introduce yourself. Again, this is your TV debut, I would assume. Yeah, the, the chief was supposed to step in, but oh, no, he chose not to. <laughs> My name is Mary Yakub. I live at 154 Dunbarry Pass uh, in Red Cedar Canyon. And it, I was at the public safety meeting last month, I believe, and, and spoke on this. And basically, the, the residents along Dunbarry Pass, as well as other parts of the canyon, are, are hoping that we can get an ordinance in place so we can put signs up on the highway or in, and on Hanley Road for no engine braking and jake braking by the truckers, the semi-truckers that go into the industrial park. Also, possibly a sign or writing along with it that says industrial park entrance, thousand feet ahead, or whatever needs to be done to warn them so they can slow down. Uh, can you elaborate on the severity of the noise? You, you, well, our children wake up at night if our windows are open. Yeah. Um, the frequency, I mean, just so we- uh, I'm a stay-at-home mom, and the only time I don't really hear it is at the lunch hour from noon to one. Oh, really? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty often. Well, Chief made some inquiries when we had all of the uh, business people uh, from the industrial park at the luncheon, and maybe he would like to make some comments 
on on their uh, situation as related to that subject. Yeah, just to bring everybody up to the the same speed here. I spoke with several of the owners of the businesses, primarily the trucking businesses, and asked about, uh, number one, is there any negative impact to them? Number two, uh, you know, why would somebody do the engine braking as opposed to regular brakes? And number three, is it really that bad? And what I was told is, yeah, it's really, really loud. Um, most of those businesses are not equipped with engine brakes on their trucks because what they said is it is not necessary there uh, given the speed and the grade there's really no reason that somebody would use it the reason that it's an option is primarily going through uh, mountain roads and things like that where your your brakes could heat up and fail so there's really there's a small wear and tear issue for the over the road truckers but as far as the trucking businesses in the business park are concerned, there's absolutely no need to be doing it there. And they did, they did concur with uh, right. the fact that it's really loud. So, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to understand what was happening out there because uh, oh, sure. no. I wasn't belittling your particular approach. But I do think that uh, they've requested an ordinance and there must be a lot of ordinances available yeah, for I comparison. Had, I haven't had time to look at it since the Public Safety Committee, but I'm sure other cities, Devon and Hill and Austin has one. So. so need a motion to uh, consider that and also to consider the attorney coming forth with an ordinance. I'd like to make a motion that we request Catherine to uh, <coughs> create an ordinance, pension breaking ordinance. I'll second the motion. Discussion? How do we enforce this? Chief. From my point of view, like most of the ordinances and laws that we have, most people, I think, just being aware of them will follow them. Uh, if we find out, um, and I, I'm sure that... And if it wakes her baby know, up again, you're going to get a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Very possible. Uh, if, if we need to, we'll just put a, put a squad there and enforce it until people... Get, get the message, but I you think know, just having the signs there will probably do most. And I, I, I was in part of those conversations when we had that luncheon, and most of the owners said that there's no reason that they should do that at all, and if we do have the signage up there, I'm sure that they'll comply, and if they don't, chief will be after them. And they also said they would even post signs right. where the uh, over-the-road truckers would see that, uh, instructing them not to use the engine brakes. We also have a smaller problem here on Vine Street. Um, I always had some complaints about that yeah, the, down the hill. But yeah, been, we addressed this last spring. There, one of the exceptions in here has to be for emergency vehicles. Right. Jim was really um, concerned about a full tanker truck come, coming back in. He said, I need the engine brake. Did they wake you up any night? Well, they make it wake up the neighbors, but, you know, I'd rather have them wake them up with water in the tanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. A couple of notes on, on the noise. Um, as I guess any bo boater could tell you, they often use the engine brake coming down the hill going from Wisconsin over the bridge to Minnesota, and you can hear that about at least two miles away uh, down the river or up the river. And also, I would suspect that... Uh, to the chief's comment about how to enforce, most of those trucks coming into the industrial park are vendors for the businesses that exist there. And I think that we might want to ask those business owners to inform their vendors, mm -hmm. don't disturb our neighborhood. Yeah. Well, and they do have a lot of trucks in the business park as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, all in favor? I, I, oh, did you have a comment? I'm oh, sorry. The only other comment was the what we've seen down Vine Street has been one or two specific um, dump truck kind of so the same thing would happen down here when we start identifying particular businesses. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to new business. Request of St. Croix EMS to install a rope rescue equipment in the White Camp Park. Hello. I'm Wes from St. Croix EMS, and I'm here just to uh, get permission and request a, a ropes tower that we'd like to build for our ropes team. Why don't you tell the TV audience the need for this, Wes? Sure. Um, for many years, we've had a ropes team, and recently we just went 
we've had a bunch of new members join the service and they've gone through a certification process through WITC, which is a 40 hour certification process. And in the past, we've gone to, we've used the Hanley Cliffs and also the YMCA, but the YMCA camp is pretty inconvenient because we have to take the rescue truck out there. It's on a dirt road and it's not very convenient for us. So with this, we're hopefully able to have a controlled environment that at any given time we, that we can go up and train and practice to continue uh, providing that excellent ropes team we have. So. One of the concerns I had originally is how are you going to keep the kids off of this? Sure, definitely. Um, I know controlling uh, the site is very important, so we figured having uh, signs to kind of explain this is not a play area, this is for or authorized personnel only, and also to gain access to the tower, you need about an 8 to 10 foot ladder to get to the first platform. Or we could carry pegs that are kept in the rescue truck that you screw into the poles. And it's almost like a step ladder that you can get up to the first platform. Kind of like when so. you're going deer hunting. Yep. Um, worst case scenario is we could put a light up there or budget for a fenced in area if it got, I mean, that's just a worst case scenario. But I think with signs you use to deter them and also having a, a ladder to gain access, kind of similar how the water towers are. That they have, that, I think, a 12-foot span that you need a ladder to get up there and actually climb it. So, did everybody see the plans? And you're you're on the park board. Uh, yeah, I guess the concern that's in in the park is there another place we can do this? Um, not really that I found. We we were thinking maybe by the water tower off of A Street, but you have to cut down a lot of trees and there's a hydrant there. I kind of figured up by the tornado siren, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind, kind of hidden way back in the corner by the trees. You certainly aren't going to have a lot of uh, people collecting in that particular area, in my opinion, but well, it yeah. all depends. But also a reason we liked it up on there is we use the Hanley Cliffs to train to do some uh, high angle type rescue. And it's, you know, it's a little dangerous for us to go up there, but it's good experience for our team. This also gives us access to train at the tower along with the cliffs to use our equipment. And Didn't you just have an occurrence where you used that technology just yeah, a couple uh, weeks ago? Yeah, it was a week ago, a couple weeks ago. Actually, uh, New Richmond and uh, our ambulance services went together into this ropes class, a 40-hour um, ropes rescue class. And we actually had to activate the team while they were in training to come down and help a gentleman out that we couldn't get out of the basement. They had to use it to get him up the stairs because he had some potential neck and back injuries and stuff. So what about yeah, we had to use the team. So we worked real well with Enrichment and we got him secured and out of there. So how does this affect our insurance or whatnot? Any legal not just with them on there, anybody yeah. from We're already okay. Yeah, we got the it's on the back of you. Okay. Thing there. We got a response. So. I think you gotta work out the details with the park board and Yeah, I you know, I, I see, definitely see the need for it. Um, it's nothing that, or something that can be rebuilt if it had to be or removed. So. Yeah, we got the poles for free. I went to Excel and got the poles, and the rest will be with donations and some, some hopefully some minimal costs of just guide wires for stabilization, and they'll be built by us and our team. Need a motion. A motion to approve. For a second. Second. Discussion, concerns. I think it's a safety problem. Yeah. I think kids are going to find a way to get up this thing in about two and a half seconds. That's what I'm worried about. Too. Yeah. They're going to find a way to get on top of that water tower, which is about a half a block away from that too. And right now, and, we have and sometimes we have to remove kids from that tower. Yeah. Don't we today have this rope rope rescue set up down in the park or in the uh, fly camp, right? Um, we use it on occasion. We haven't used it um, this year, have we? Why don't we use the Y camp this year? We use it once in a while, okay. but it's it totally takes us out of the city. You have to drive way back there. It's. But how is that one set up as far as accessibility? Um, we can't physically get our rescue truck out there. We actually have to. Is it for it. us people? What I mean for for kids getting oh. up on it now. They um, pegs, they, right? They've got pegs all the way down to the bottom because they use it for their day camps and stuff like that. The problem that we have um, is that we have to work <coughs> around their schedule of, of using the, the actual tower, which obviously in the summertime is when we usually train the most, and mm -hmm. it's pretty difficult to, to be able to work around 
their consistent or constant uh, day camp and, and camps that they have going on or use that tower. So the Y has it set up, but they must have somebody monitor it because the kids can get up uh, on it at any time. Yeah, they have actually a, an actual climbing tower and then they have actually a, a, a ropes tower, two, two separate different towers, but um, from the, from my mem if my memory serves me right, there's no actual physical um, Security, uh, like yeah. we were th like we were talking about in regards to needing an eight foot ladder and stuff like that. But uh, I, I think they pretty pretty much closely monitor their kids to make sure that the kids have not wandered out but, into that area. But the, you said the water tower was 12 feet. Is there any problem setting up at a 12 foot height? We could, like I said, it's the draft we just kind of designed it with preliminary, but we could do 12 feet. I mean, that's. I mean, so somebody came up with 12 foot as a number at one time they yeah. thought was safe. Do you have an alternative site? Do, do what? An alternative site? Uh, we're looking for suggestions, Mr. Morrison. Well, I don't know. I don't... The alternative site that we found that was that, that would address the security aspect and the safety aspect, as well as address the our ability to, to be able to use it, um, would be the Eighth Street Water Tower, or the Eighth Street mm -hmm. um, site. Uh, that'll be more labor intensive in regards to clearing the the land off. Um, and then we also have the the aspects of neighbors too. Closer to residents, closer, closer to, residents. to the park. There's a water, the, there's the a fire location, hydrant. And the location up at the uh, Hanley Cliff area is that uh, for vehicle traffic, it's regulated for the gate to go. Well, there's on. gates there too. There's right? gates there, and then um, it's uh, off towards the tornado siren. So um, if you're down in the park, um, the vantage point you can't really see that. Um, it's not going to be as tall as the, the tornado siren. So you're not going to be able to see the posts as, as much, um, and then our ability to be able to do cross training of the cliff area as well as being able to do the tower training is uh, at the same. Oh, well, we have some good concerns, and I oh, I mean definitely, I, yeah. I agree and with I you guys. I don't take think that. any which way we, we shape it. I don't think we're going to. If you take those into consideration yeah. and uh, and you monitor that as much as possible. I, I don't think it's a bad site, but could we hear from our chief public safety officer, uh, Chief Smith? Do you have any opinion on this issue? You know, I'm sorry, but my attention was elsewhere. <laughs> okay. I honestly, I have to look at it a little bit more. I was. Through well, why don't you? We have a motion. You can uh, amend that motion to make it contingent upon uh, your question to the chief. Whether or not he feels safe. Is that okay with the one who made the motion? The to the chief? Just I, in I general, if he thinks it's safe. If he would approve this structure at yeah. that location. I'll, I'll, modif I'll modify, the, um, modify the motion to Put say. Put a fence around it? I mean, that's the insurance people are suggesting, too. Yeah. You know? I'd just like to get a recommendation from our public safety man as to the public safety of Make this. a motion contingent upon that. I will modify my motion to be contingent on. Chief Smith's review. As seconder, I'll go along with that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion. Let's go to uh, rezone property at 109 2nd Street from B3 Central Business and I-1 Light Industrial to B3 Central Business, ordinance number 8-07. Do <coughs> need a motion to suspend the rules? Uh, actually, yeah. Okay. There's a second? second the first all reading, right. yeah. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Let's go to C, final resolution regarding special assessments for 2007 sidewalk curb and gutter replacement project, resolution number 13-07. To move for first reading. Uh, we've already. Oh, we got to move on that. Yeah. Oh, oh, we had the hearing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Move, move to approve resolution. Oh, to suspend. Suspend. No. I'm sorry. To move to suspend the rules. Oh, I, motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motions carried. Go ahead. Move to approve resolution 13-07. Third second. Second. Discussion. I guess we had it in the hearing. <laughs> and to, uh, include or exclude. Exclude that one. One property. Mr. Brown, I believe, right. was mentioned. Exactly. Okay. We'll include that at, um, which I'm going to check, at 726 8th Street. There you go. Do, we, do we have any sort of 
a need for a publication. There's a lot of people that have that concern. You know, how is the frontage calculated? I I wasn't aware of the 25% yeah, on the I'm wondering if there's any. At the assessment hearing. They actually received the assessment roll with their footage on it and how it was calculated. Right, but it seems like they didn't quite understand it. I'm just wondering if it's worthwhile to, to um, have something published somewhere. I don't know. Well, they, we send that. It's been in the paper, too. Right. I don't remember what was in the paper, if it was detailed or not. We can address well, that with future ones where I, we have a I would suggest deal. that we have a, a better explanation of that, not necessarily in the paper, but to the people that are going to be involved with the curb and gutter and sidewalk. It would be mm -hmm. as simple as just putting an additional piece of paper as a cover sheet saying this is how it's calculated. Devin's going to take care of that the next that time would be we great. do it. I think then. Yeah. Good suggestion. Did. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. Preliminary resolution special assessments for 2007 Aldridge Avenue curb and gutter replacement project resolution 14 07. Motion to suspend the rules. There a second? Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion's carried. They're always trying to see if I'm sleeping. <laughs> move, move to approve res preliminary resolution 14-07. There a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. I think we got everything on that page. So, I want to mention the public hearing to be associated with that. A public hearing is required. Uh, the normal procedure is after the uh, engineer estimates are prepared, uh, they're presented to the city clerk and then the city clerk establishes the public hearing uh, that would either be july 16th i believe or the first meeting in august uh, depending when uh, i think we're pretty much ready with the engineering estimates uh, okay. but it would be one of those two dates and we'll try to get the, the sheet ready for okay. that so they uh, the next one is E, Old Highway 35, Stage Line Road, Intersection Design, Single Lane runabout, Roundabout, or Four-Way Stop with Left Turn Lanes. Denny. When the Certified Survey Map for Demay Properties was approved, one of the conditions uh, was the, um, that the city would uh, take over the jurisdictional maintenance of Stage Line Road from the uh, State Trunk Highway 35 bridge through the intersection of Old Highway 35. Uh, the consideration now is um, what type of design do we want on an intersection? The city staff preference and the developer's preference is to do a single lane modern roundabout design. There's th three reasons for suggesting and recommending that uh, design consideration. One is uh, a safety consideration. They're more safe. One is a, an efficiency from volume standpoint. They're more efficient, so more cars can run through that intersection uh, in a period, of, a set period of time. And third is the long-term maintenance considerations. Uh, the town was uh, discussed the potential of a modern roundabout or a tr more traditional four-legged intersection with left turn lanes. Uh, they would prefer the second or the four-legged intersection. Uh, and uh, before they considered that in final form, they were asking if the city uh, would uh, give consideration to their to our particular preference on a design. Considering uh, Catherine was in a meeting uh, with me, uh, some of the May representatives, engineers. I don't know, Catherine, if you want to share any perspective on this issue. Well, the question is um, part of the developers' agreement and a contingency or condition of the CSM was the city taking over jurisdiction. And now um, it appears that the town of Hudson, before they're willing to sign that agreement, want to know what the type of intersection it's going to be, even though they won't be maintaining it. Um, the intersection will be in the town. You need to understand that. Um, and so we just needed to get some direction from council on whether either option is uh, okay with the council and then we could go ahead with the uh, 
jurisdictional agreement or just what the council's thoughts are on that? I kind of like the uh, roundabout because from a maintenance standpoint, uh, we're in a better position. We don't have to monitor those lights. And if we're going to have that responsibility, I'd like to take the course of least resistance. There are representatives from DeMay Properties here tonight. I don't know if they want to make any comments in regard to... I'd like to hear if they do. Mr. Schumacher. Council, Mr. President. The, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'm the one that I think that initiated the issue with respect to the jurisdictional transfer. When we met at the township prior to it coming to the city council, uh, there was some sense that I had gotten from the, from the town that if, uh, we weren't if the town wasn't going to maintain it and if the town wasn't going to construct it, which would be the case if the jurisdiction was with the city, then it was thought, at least my impression was, that uh, then the design of that intersection was not an issue for, for the town. I was wrong about that. The, uh, the town, after, after, and so then we had that meeting. I came to the city council. I came to the planning commission before that, and I brought up that issue because I thought that that addressed it and was incorrect about that. So the, it then came back to the town, and uh, after the uh, city had passed the motion saying that a jurisdictional transfer was part of this, and uh, uh, the town, I drafted a jurisdictional transfer agreement, and the uh, town looked at that. They said that that was fine, and, but they did not want that transfer to occur until after the design and the construction of that intersection was completed. So that's where we stood. Uh, I looked at it, and it was my judgment that uh, as the developers, we were going to build whatever somebody finally tells us to build. Uh, the preference of the developer was that it be a roundabout. The preference, as Denny indicated from the staff, was that it would be a roundabout. But frankly, uh, there's uh, a sense from uh, those members in the town that have uh, been uh, through the roundabouts that maybe that isn't the best design. And if we look at the number of intersections that are in the city of Hudson, uh, there's a limited number of them that are roundabouts. And uh, it's a change, whether it's a change for the better, change for the worse, everybody will have their opinion on it. And whether it's a right decision or a wrong decision, people will have their opinions about that. What I'm concerned about is that, uh, as I said, from the developer's standpoint, we're willing to build whatever it is that needs to get built. We understand that that intersection with the development that's going to go there, that the, uh, the intersection needs to be improved. Nobody has any dispute about that. What the question is, is if the town, uh, and it seems to me it's within their prerogative, it's an intersection that's located in the town, even if the parcel that's adjacent to this that hasn't been annexed would be annexed, it's not going to change that issue because the boundary for the city is the north right-of-way of this particular road. And so it's, in any event, it's not going to be a city road. So I look at it as, well, if the jurisdictional transfer is the issue, you know, and if the city is concerned that they don't want to maintain it down the road because it may be more expensive or whatever, you know, maybe we don't do the jurisdictional transfer, and if it ends up being something that's more costly to uh, uh, maintain down the road, because potentially at some point in the future we may need to have street lights, and that may cause it to be more expense, uh, then you know maybe the city says, well, we don't want to take over that jurisdictional transfer, and it's in the town, and the town can continue to maintain it. But I think my understanding from the meeting that we had, uh, which there were representatives. Uh, from the developer, the representatives from the city, the engineers were there, was that, what, and what I need to know from the council is, if the town decides that they would prefer not to have a roundabout there, which is certainly possible, is the city going to say, no, we can't do anything out there because the city's position is cast in stone that we have to have a roundabout? <clears throat> and that's when I need the indication or some response from the city because if that's the situation, it's problematic, obviously, for us because even though we agree to pay for it, even agree, you know, 
put in whatever somebody says, we've got a situation where because of the disagreement between municipalities, uh, we're not able to proceed. And what? we're kind of ready to proceed. Uh, Catherine and I, uh, Mr. Tillmans and his uh, attorney have spent an enormous amount of time putting the other nuts and bolts together of this thing and we're kind of at the point that we're ready to proceed. There's some further review that's going on with the city on the various uh, uh, plans and as I understand that's still in process but we're we're kind of down to the end of the, the process and now we may be stuck. Tom, I'd like to make a suggestion sure. to uncomplicated, un uncomplicate the complicated yep. and that is let's make a decision on whether it's gonna be a roundabout or the other and then let's see what happens. You certainly could do that. I guess what I'm, you know, what I'm concerned about is, as I said, we're paying, we're going to pay, and we're going to put in something there that's going to address it. And whether it's a roundabout or turn lanes, what my concern is is if you say, for example, let's just take hypothetically, you say it's a roundabout, How and we go, we and we first go, choice is roundabout. Well, and. You know, that may be, and I'd be happy with that as long as you, if the council would say, if we can't, if we can't get an agreement on it, we're okay that it be turn lanes. You know, that, that's what I would like. And because I just don't want this to be the stumbling block for everything else that we're trying to do out there because it seems to me that although roundabouts certainly have merits, I mean, I listened to the presentation from the uh, engineers at that meeting. I've talked about it before. Uh, you know, it has merits, but it's still new, it's still different, and but there's going to be people... Are they set in stone and one or the other out there at the township? I don't, I don't know that, and I don't think the town... And I don't think the town has had the opportunity to look at it, and they're going to look at it at their July meeting, but what I'm concerned about is that they're not... You know, they're going to look at it. They've, they've said at the meeting that we're not engineers, we want a presentation, they're going to get the presentation, they'll have the opportunity to make the decision. But the, my concern is if they make a decision that says no to a roundabout and you've made a decision that says the roundabout's the only thing that can possibly work in this particular intersection, that that's problematic and I don't think that it's necessary. I, I, I didn't entertain a motion for I, I think both options will be fine, but from a practicality standpoint, there's going to be a movie theater out, theater out there and there's going to be some rush times and the best way to get people in and out of there would be to have the roundabout. So absolutely, I think absolutely. Absolutely. ideally it'd be nice to have the, uh, the roundabout as the first option. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And we're looking at coming in, eventually when that's all built out, there's going to be a lot of traffic going in and out of there. Yeah, It'll exactly. have to be a light. Somebody will have to pay for the light. Not only that, or but if it's going to be our jurisdiction, I'd like to see us have a little bit uh, on our first yeah. choice. Yeah. Maybe we could determine our own uh, fate. Destiny, in our, yeah. Yeah, in our, in our jurisdiction. I have a question for Denny. This is going to be different from the Hanley roundabout because it's going to be single lane. I'm assuming that it's all going to be on one, I'm just thinking of snow plowing. It's going to be all on, on one level. It will not have a raised center. It's all going to be one level of roadway. Well, it'll be raised uh, slightly because you don't want cars to be able to drive over the middle of it. Uh, yeah, but uh, we uh, it, it's, it's, that, not right? a, it's not a two lane. It's not a pair of two lane roundabouts. The Hanley Road intersections is a fairly complicated system Really, to start people out on it's too bad we went and had a single lane roundabout at uh, Vine Street and Carmichael to start on, but that choice was made. But this this is not nearly as complicated as that no. intersection is, um, and that's what uh, I or any other city representative, if we attend that meeting, discuss it with the town, would try to point out. To I'd them. entertain a motion for first choice on roundabout. Uh, I would make that motion, except I don't say first choice. I say no, roundabout. roundabout. I'll second that. There is, there is no second place here. It's roundabout. Um, how do you feel about that, Tom? Well, I've indicated how I feel about that. I mean, I think that that's somebody drawing a line in the sand that doesn't need to be drawn. But you know, that's my opinion. I just I think that that if things come grinding to a halt here uh, because of that issue, that seems to me to be problematic when we've got 99.9 .9 of the other intersections in the community don't have a roundabout. What the merits of it is independent of that. Mm -hmm. I just think that that is the wrong place to draw a line in the sand. That's my opinion. I think that, that that's... Well, maybe another thing to consider is and it makes sense for the city to take over jurisdiction, but the city isn't obligated to take over jurisdiction. And if the four-way, standard four-way intersection is the way they want to go, then that's the, maybe you want to response. rethink taking over jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. Well, see, let's just, I think the mayor had an excellent yep. suggestion. Let's make 
our move yeah. to suit us and they make an offer and see what the reaction is. Sure. If they say no, it just can't be that way. Well, then you take over the jurisdiction and you pay for it. All. We have we're in discussion. We have a comment from the theater owner. Well, I guess um, the one thing about I mean, I think we would we're fine with it being a roundabout. I think that would probably be our preference. But our preference is to resolve the issue at some point. <laughs> so is ours. And, but to resolve it in this building season so that if we have a resolution today that says it's a roundabout and for whatever reason the positioning on the township is that, you know, they've said we have to do this, you know, let's just say no. Instead of really keeping an open mind and saying let's evaluate it and see what does make sense and maybe they would come to a roundabout. If we just, again, say it's a roundabout, the township says no, now we're July 3rd at their meeting. Now we have to come back to you and come up with one, a new design for a different, we're gonna be delayed if it's not a roundabout anyway because we haven't, the people haven't really designed a different. Sure. Route. So, I mean, our very much preference is to convince the township to do a roundabout, but if, if they won't, I think the suggestion by the attorney to say, well, then maybe you won't take over jurisdiction then it's, it allows us to keep moving forward. I mean, we haven't been able to close on the land, which we've had a pending purchase agreement and money out for eight months maybe, um, and we'll be done with this building, building season again pretty soon. And they can't get all their utilities in, so then we're not building this year, which I don't know that we can get open this year anymore anyway, but we're not even starting. And they can't start maybe till next year, and we're just, you know, we're going to be two years down the road. What's what's the motion? To approve the roundabout. Mm -hmm. What uh, get, maybe Dennis could an, answer this question: the future development or Denny, mm -hmm. if any, any will this roundabout handle everything that's going to be out there in the future? Are you saying it's a single, so they're what? They're well, we, we feel this uh, single lane roundabout design would handle a lot of development in the future. Let's say it wouldn't have to be, now if you go up a four lane, you'd have stop signs to start with, you may have to convert it to stop lights. That's where the expense would be in the a, in a future. Where we feel the roundabout would accommodate the traffic for a very long period of time. Council, are you still adamant about that uh, motion in, since we listened to Tom and the owner? I think Tom, uh, we might point out to him that we have all, uh, the city, the developer, uh, the, the, the movie theater operator, we've all been discussing all along a roundabout. The fact that someone now wants to make it a four-way stop with stoplights is not a problem of our making. We are consistent with our belief that a roundabout is the best way to go. We've said that all along. It is certainly the best for our maintenance, which we would be responsible for if we were to take over control exactly. of that this. That was my point up we need to We need to look to uh, our duty to our own taxpayers. Uh, I think I would have a difficult time explaining to my constituents that I just voted a bunch of their tax money to maintain a much more complicated uh, uh, something, uh, uh, an intersection, out in the township of Hunsett. Well, and, and if we're going to take that position, then uh, I'll certainly have a conversation with Jeff Johnson on, on our feelings, if that's okay with everyone. I don't know that I got a second to my motion, did I? I said, yeah. yeah, you oh, did. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. if, if I can just suggest, and, and I understand that has been the discussion, although I've saw, I saw plans from two years ago that had both alternatives, and I know that it's gravitated towards the roundabout. But... In the interest of, as I said, being able to keep the process moving is I would like the council to consider the suggestion that Kathy made, which is that if for some reason we can't get it agreed upon on a roundabout, that then the alternative, is, and if the alternative is going to be turn lanes, it's still going to have to be approved by the city as far as the design factor of it, but that we just don't transfer the jurisdiction, and then that isn't an issue. They'll have to, the town will continue to maintain it in that particular case. Well, and it, I, don't, I don't think this is a situation where roundabout is out here as the only possibility and turn lanes are out here. It's, they're both in here, and there's, you know, 
Yeah, but if they have the jurisdiction, they're going to make the choice uh, that, that that we have our way. I think. Well, the roundabout. That, that's why I say if if those are if if it is presented in that fashion, not only does it resolve that issue, it gives the opportunity to just simply once we get to the July third, we know where we're at. Yeah, I like that solution. Well, wasn't it considered beneficial to the city to, for us to have jurisdiction over this intersection? Danny, do you have a, anything you wish to address on that? One is, you know, the amount of traffic that's going to be using this is going to be, a lot of it's going to be generated by that commercial development. Secondly, uh, for us to continue plowing or, you know, from the distance from the bridge to the interchange, you know, is, is there cost implied? Yes, there are, but it's, it's not a significant amount of money. So. But you would be okay if we turn jurisdiction of this intersection over to the township? Town has it now. Well, town has it now. I understand, but they, they just solution, retain it. Well, no, I don't have an issue with that. If that's their it choice, does, it does make it a lot easier for us to plow though to go out and around and keep coming right back again. Yeah, that's true. But as I said, that was you know I explained. I was the one. Nobody was talking about a jurisdictional transfer until I brought it up, and you know it, it appears that at, I thought that that was a solution to a problem. It wasn't. And <laughs> nice going, Tom. Well, you know. <laughs> Well, but, like that well that's the facts, and so let's deal with it and carry on. I'd like to see that drawn up the way that it was suggested. Oh, I have reviewed it. I mean, the agreement. But the reality is it is an intersection that's in the town. So I myself didn't understand the background to why are we talking about this jurisdictional transfer. I think the idea was they're going to plow it anyway. But when it comes to possible additional expense of lights in the future, then the city may you know, have a different opinion on that. That's the reason you would decide either to take it over or not to take it over. Mm -hmm. And you're well within your rights to say, well, if it's not going to be a roundabout, we don't want to take it over. Town, you deal yeah. with it. Well, do you I want to modify to your, my, my motion? You want to modify that? If it's that. okay with the seconder, that I will amend the motion that yeah. uh, the city of Hudson wishes to uh, have a, a one lane roundabout constructed there. Uh, alternatively, uh, the city desires not to take over jurisdiction of that intersection. Is that okay with the seconder? That's fine. Is that okay? Does that make sense, counselors? Well, that's what you asked for, Tom. Well, I'm, just, I'm not sure that that's exactly what I asked for. <laughs> Why don't Why you reverbalize well, what you asked for so we all understand? And then we can modify the motion. I indicated, I believe, that the city would not take over jurisdiction if the higher cost option is elected because the city was concerned that they would have to incur those additional costs for a design that they did not want to have. That was my statement, yes, okay. and that's why I was... And that's How does that differ from my motion? Yeah. Well, because now you could have a roundabout and you wouldn't have jurisdiction of the road. No, we... Alternatively, okay. if, they, if the township, as I said, mm -hmm. does not desire a one-lane modern roundabout, okay. they can maintain jurisdiction of the intersection. Okay. The city will decline to take jurisdiction of the intersection. If that's the motion, then I'm fine. I don't think that that's what you said. That's, I don't think that's what you said the first time. I think that I accept what you said this time because but that we know what we're issue. saying this time. Okay. Okay. Word for word Is that okay with the seconder? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fine. We've had the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's carried. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Uh, let's see. Um, communication recommendation to the mayor. Possible July 2nd date change. You did have a communique from Devin indicating that if, it, if we don't have anything for agendas, let's just forget about it, but give us the power to go ahead with uh, uh, okaying the bills as we have done in other occasions. Is that basically right. I mean, the verbiage? I will make and a, if we start to see that things yeah. are piling up, then we'll... Then we'll have Well, it. I will make a motion at this time. This is, this is our last meeting right. before that date. I will move that um, uh, unless staff deems otherwise right. that we uh, forego the July 2nd meeting and authorize the city clerk, the mayor, and the city administrator to conduct city business as per usual. Is there a second? I'll second the motion. Discussion? I won't be here on the second either way, so. Yeah, I'm probably none of us will be. 
Huh? <laughs> All in favor? Yeah, okay. I, oh, wait a minute. Uh, Danny. Well, I, I, I don't think what I want to say is going to affect your motion, but the we have advertised for a public hearing on this overlay district downtown. Now, if we don't think we may have a quorum, I don't want to have to cancel the meeting at the last second and try to contact people. I'd rather cancel it now so we can right. cancel, cancel the public hearing and then just reschedule it for July 16th. But if there's a question where we're even going to have a quorum, no, no. Then, then we might as well cancel it and then then I can notify everybody. But there is a, we do have public hearing notices out for a We hearing. will only have a meeting if some emergency status and comes I up. I was not aware of that. He's so. there saying is. there's a public hearing already scheduled. Well, they, but he's going to change it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Depending on what position we take. Everybody understand? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You have a question? I'm just trying to figure out what we're voting on. <laughs> Not having July You're the not, only not one. This, not having this meeting, but the public hearing came up. And what the public we'll hearing is going to change the public it. hearing I, if we don't have the meeting. Got it. I got it. Thank you. Okay. Uh, communications items for future agendas. Any altar person? I think we've had it. City attorney? Nothing. City administrator? No. Okay, now we're going into a closed session pursuant to 19851E and 19851G Wisconsin stats to deliberate regarding Lakefront Park Seawall project contract negotiations and to confer with legal counsel concerning litigation in which the city is likely to become involved regarding Lakefront Park Seawall project contract and 19851D Wisconsin stats to consider strategy for crime detection or prevention regarding renewal of alcoholic beverage license of Weston Incorporated in DBI uh, Hotel Dibble. So moved. Second. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Rademacher? Yes. Wyland? Yes. O'Malley? Yes. Birchall? Yes. We're in closed session. <laughs>